Hello, today I would like to offer you a compact uh, multi-item sorter, which can handle a vast amount of different item types. It's a one chunk build, um, very compact, uh, with a very strong focus on reliability. It's uh, build and forget, meaning that you don't have to chunk out the area or have to turn off the system or anything when you leave it. So it's uh, robust and it doesn't require any slot reservation. Let's go and um, sort some items and um, then it's maybe easier to see on uh, what the system is actually doing. I gathered a few items here, um, various redstone components that we would like to sort, um, a few different types of gold blocks, oak and spruce, um, some stackable to 16, some stuff um, unstackable, as well as some wool products here. That's what we're gonna sort. Um, the way it works is that we have all the redstone component assigned to this chest here, which is at the moment empty. So all the redstone components should be going in here. Um, all the gold components here, oak and spruce products in here. Then we have wool and terracotta. Um, the boat as an unstackable bill should land in here. The drop off chest here is uh, these two in the middle at the moment. Um, and we'll chuck those in and the system should be start sorting immediately. Let's go also in uh, creative here to see on what is going on. Just a little bit of behind the scenes. So there's a hopper minecart um, going around trying to find the right categories and uh, putting the items into the relevant chest. So I don't know which one is uh, here started now. But I will fast forward now the um, whole process a little bit and then uh, we can see the result. So the system has been working now for a bit and um, yeah, let's have a look. So all the redstone components ended up here. Um, so this is classic for a multi-item sorter that you can group these items like that. Um, oak and spruce products ended up here the gold stuff here and the wool here and the terracotta here. Ah, oh, yeah, and these two items are not sortable at the moment. This one is uh, because it's non stackable and this is simply not configured. Um, but this is pretty much the system. Um, yeah, so that way what we have here is that the uh, bottom part and the top part are independent of each other. Um, which you can see here, for example. So you can assign a group of items to this two chests here um, and a different set of items here. Um, you can also see that this um, is also to some extent extendable. So these single chests can be put into double chests and more hoppers can be added. I will show that in more detail at the end. Um, so if you want to increase the storage capacity, that's absolutely uh, possible. Um, yeah, but this is pretty much the system on how it, how it works. Let's also have a quick look on uh, where the system would work. Um, the system itself needs at least a Minecraft version 1.16 or newer. And it generally would work on uh, Java, uh, Fabric and Forge. Whereas uh, for Forge, we uh, there are some mods out that uh, would mess with it. Um, for example, the Performant mod, so you would need to look out for that. Um, I myself also use uh, or play on a paper server and I also built this exact uh, system as well and it's running uh, completely flawless. Um, but it's a bit of a question mark when it comes to paper spigot um, if the, uh, yeah, the, the servers need to be configured redstone friendly and then it can work. But uh, there are some risks um, and there's a lot of stuff that can be configured incorrectly or um, yeah, then uh, you would have problems on paper and spigot. Um, it would not work, the system would not work for the Minecraft uh, Bedrock Edition. All in all, it's a somewhat, uh, despite its compactness, it's a somewhat complex build. Um, I would not therefore give a, like a block by block tutorial at this stage. I would highly recommend to use a tool like uh, Lightmatica if you can. Um, or in case of Forge, uh, maybe just the uh, Shimati Cannon from, from Create. 
and uh, yeah, these tools help a lot to like paint by numbers to uh, build it correctly, and uh, this will save you in the end uh, a lot of headache. Um, it's much easier than following a block by block part tutorial. If you want to change the layout of the uh, storage system, there are a few things that you can do. Uh, what cannot be done is extending the system beyond the chunk borders, so it needs to stay um, with the same footprint overall. But what you can do, for example, if you want to have more chests down here, you can make every single chest a double chest, for example, down here. Um, you can also make the top ones a double chest in certain segments if you want, if you want to have more storage up here. Um, also these uh, hoppers, they don't need to point down, so you can also, for example, have, um, for example, like that. And instead of this pointing down into the chest, you can also have two pointing sideways. Um, like that, for example. And then you could, in theory, for example, have also two double chests up here and even also this one. Uh, this is not powered, so you can even have a third one if you would want to. Yeah, so you have a little bit of flexibility here if you want to, how you want to lay out certain things here. Um, yeah, so this is just an example. Yeah, so depending on your storage requirements, you can um, modify that a little bit. Also, this one here in the back has hoppers, as you can see. So this is the last storage slice. And uh, also even below here is a configuration chest for those two. Um, the barrels here are just manual storage. Let's also have a look at some of the building tricks um, that I could share. Uh, we have, it's a one chunk build, I said, right? And um, that means it's like a 16 by 16 footprint, um, which is mandatory. So this system needs to be built inside one chunk. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen what it is, like if you press F3 and G, uh, you see the chunk borders of the game. And uh, so this system needs to be placed in the world so it exactly fits into this uh, area. Um, also, when building the system, I would, uh, yeah, small tip is just place the hopper minecart last. Um, you will see here that we have also filter items in here. So if I will provide a download, a um, world download, as well as a schematic, um, so that you can check the contents here. Um, I would place this one last, so it's not running while you run around here and do stuff. Uh, we also have a filter dropper here. Normally I have these signs here, so you can see um, um, on what is uh, the filter item. We also have a few, I uh, would, wouldn't say odd rail placements, but um, yeah, so if you, for example, like do like this, it would obviously not work. Um, and if I put it like this, now it works. Um, but if you, sometimes if you, yeah, now it works, it's, it's fine. But sometimes uh, you have to play around a little bit with the rails that they are correctly going the same way as you see that in the uh, world download. Yeah, one particular candidate is this rail here, which is a little bit hard to place. So if I place this like that, it would end up like this. So you kind of have to place this rail first, um, then this one, so it curves in here, and then you have to place temporarily a rail here, so this one goes up, and then you can place back the hopper. Yeah, it's not rocket science, but it's a little bit of playing around so that you get these curves correctly and then it should also work fine for you. In the redstone logic here, I use a little bit of wool as well. You can use any other um, solid block though. I'm gonna just use it here for differentiating some um, wires from each other, but um, any other block will do. Um, 
wherever we have uh, slabs, so you, it's required to also have slabs. Um, but apart from that, I think it's uh, fairly, fairly straightforward. One note as well. Um, one more note as well is that uh, we have here composters on top of the hopper lines um, to reduce lag. Um, please note that uh, these are some of them are filled here, as you can see, because they have a double function. They have on the one hand is to reduce the lag, but also they used here as a um, way to give signals um, this way. So they also have a filling level of uh, one at least. If you want to connect the uh, system to maybe a farm or maybe a bulk storage, you have uh, multiple options. And one thing is you can, for example, come from here, from this side, um, like so. Um, the other option is to come from any of these sides here. For example, if you have a system there, you could come like so, and connect another system. Um, alternatively, you can also come up here um, over this block and come out here. Uh, one thing to note, if you hook up um, the storage system, let's say to a farm, uh, let's say you hook it up, for example, to an iron farm, um, it is so that, for example, then the hopper minecart would like start sorting this poppy and um, then you get another item from the farm and, um, well, at some point of time you sort that um, with the hopper minecart and then your farm is producing more. Um, and what happens is um, other items here um, may not be sorted if uh, constantly there's like one item coming in here, like uh, very sporadically, um, continuously, for example. Um, so what needs to be done as well here to not uh, lower the performance of the um, sorting system is that uh, these need to be like arriving, let's say, in a sort of a, in batches, um, which makes the system more efficient. Um, because it takes the same time to sort five poppies, it's the same time as sorting 30 poppies, so it's better to um, yeah, let them come in here in batches. So what you could do, for example, very simple is, um, if this is, let's say, your iron farm, for example, or your bamboo farm or whatever, you could, for example, um, batch this. Um, one way of doing it, there are multiple ways, is, for example, here to have two daylight sensors um, um, opposing each other, for example. Uh, that way, always one is um, on. In this case, now they are um, starting to stack here. Um, and they are not running immediately in the system. And uh, this is unstable. And um, for example, if we would um, turn it to night. Then this one would unlock and uh, all the items are flushed into the system. And uh, this one would be locking. And uh, now the poppies would start here. Uh, yeah, coming in here and being locked here. And uh, this way, for example, um, only bigger batches are arriving here in the storage system from your farms, and uh, that makes the whole storage system uh, more efficient to run. As I said, the um, top section and the bottom section are independent of each other. Um, we have a configuration chest for this part here, for the top part, which is up here. And uh, which looks like this. And um, then we have another configuration chest down here. Um, it's a little bit harder to reach, but this is actually beneficial that you don't accidentally click it. And um, here we have the terracotta assigned. Now let's have a look how the configuration is uh, working. So let's assume we wanna assign these items here, the chicken loot we wanna assign to these two chests. Um, this means that we would need to change the configuration chest down here and uh, all the configuration chests up here and down below are working the same way. So 
what we are looking now uh, works then for every chest. Um, yeah, before we are allowed to change the configuration, we must uh, first here always turn off the system. And that means all the lamp off its system off. And we also need to wait before we can uh, change the configuration. We also always need to wait that the system actually has shut down, which means that the minecart is not running around anywhere. Um, you, so you could listen and see if you can hear something. But you can also double check. There's like a glass here. So if the minecart is sitting down here, that is a good sign. So that it's not running around. And the third thing that we need to do is also check that there's nothing selected at the moment, that there's no section selected. That means that there are still items transported in the system. And for as long as the items still transported in the system, we are also not allowed to change any, any of the configurations. So yeah, step one, turn off. Step two, check for the minecart that it's in parking position here. Step three, this should be off. All right, then let's have a look here at the configuration chest here. I'll just right click like that. And um, we'll start here with the default um, configuration. Um, I like to use as a filter item, I like to use red dye. Um, it's always easy to see um, when you have an ill filter item and you can easily get it from poppies. Um, and we are never allowed to um, sort any of the filter items, so that's why a nice red item is uh, preferred for me, but any other named stackable will work as well. So what I will do is now put the chest into the default um, configuration, like the empty configuration. And um, what I just want to show here is that uh, now it's uh, like slice selected is on uh, because we don't have enough uh, filter items in here yet. And when we put this last one here in, we have um, the slices off. This is exactly also how you can test that you have enough items in here. And um, so it would always start with uh, th having three unstackables in here and then um, stackables for the rest except for the last dot, which has five. Um, so you have a total of 55 um, filter items. Okay, so always when I take out note an item, you see the light will turn on. And um, if I put it back in, it will turn off. And this is also the sign that this is now configured correctly. Um, then, uh, yeah, let's... Um, and the rule is now for every um, stackable item, um, you take out one filter item. So that's, for example, how you can do it. You can just uh, assign like that. And if we would now um, sort here a few chickens, I will, because I'm now done with uh, configuring, I can turn on the system again. And it will now start sorting these items in here. Um, the filter items I always park somewhere else, far away, so that we don't accidentally put them in here, which would be uh, problematic. So we want to keep those away. So that's what we do here. And um, yeah, so the, the chickens are making now their way through and they are coming in now here. Okay. So if I want to... Um, and the configuration item is now coming back. If we want to now configure another item, um, for example, this egg, so we follow the same process. Turn off. Double check that the minecart is here. System is off. Nothing is working. Um, then we can do so by adding another item here. Um, here's so one special rule. What you need to do is like uh, for every normal stackable, you take out one item. And for an egg, uh, which is uh, stackable to 16, which doesn't stack to 64, you need to take out four items in total. So I will take out a few more from here, um, like that. Yeah, so now um, this is also configured. We can turn it back on the system if we want, or leave it off, whatever. Um, 
I'll park here also these uh, items in here. And if we now chuck in here the items, yeah, leave on the system, then oddly, also shortly afterwards, also the eggs should be sorted here. Okay. So I put also like a marker here. Um, this can also go on, on here, for example. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. You may have seen that I named the items um, here, for example, I use filter one for the first chest and filter two for the second chest. Um, it's not strictly necessary that you separate the filter items between these two, um, but it's a good practice, I would say. Um, for example, if you ever accidentally um, put a filter item in here and try to sort it, um, then it would only mess um, with this chest here and it would not mess with this one because it's using a different filter name item. So that if, uh, if this ever happens, it's much easier to debug the system um, because it's only one one configuration chest is going to be affected and it saves you some time on the long run. Because um, if it's all, if all items are named the same, then uh, yeah, it would be pulled out everywhere and yeah, it's a bit more messy. Let's talk about uh, a little bit about um, um, special case handling. Um, you have seen that here the uh, unassigned um, items land in here, for example, the unstackables, which can't be sorted, uh, but also the sponge because it's not assigned. So if you take out these items here, you will also see that the lamp is turning um, off. So it's just a small indication every now and then to check here these um, um, items here. If you ever, for some reason, um, have an incorrect configuration, um, or if you produce overflow, um, items would end up here. Um, I'll put in a few, you will hear what's gonna happen. Uh, the system will then not continue running and uh, you also should fix these errors immediately because um, they could in theory cascade, right? Like if one is not cor uh, configured correctly, then um, stuff could go into the wrong chests and stuff. So that's why the system would stop here and uh, you have to fix those to continue working. In this case, uh, before taking the stuff out, it's best is to shut the system off, take the item out and uh, see whatever you got here, why you have the error in the first place. Now, what is also good is, um, for example, what could happen is, for example, if you have something misconfigured, um, let's say here this slice is misconfigured, um, like that. Then you see that the system is off um, at the moment, but um, this lamp is still on. And uh, if it doesn't turn off after a while, that means something is misconfigured here. Um, what you can do is have a round walk, I would say, like a little uh, walkway here around the system. It's probably the fastest way, um, one on this side and maybe one up here. And you will see uh, if you walk around here that there's one odd one like this for example here right like this is not and then you can deduce from this side so to say which one is the incorrect one and uh, fix it like that and uh, once you fixed it then also the lamp should turn off yeah I think that's it um, for the system yeah, if you have questions about the system or if you have built it um, in your world, let me know in the comment section. Would like to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching and bye bye.